Today's lab is called Specific Heat of an Unknown Metal. Our objective is to identify an unknown metal by using their specific heat as an identifying property. Technique notes. You will be utilizing a water bath today. You will need to heat up a large source of water in which we'll be putting our test tubes into in order to heat the metals up to a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. The idea is that the energy from the water in the heat bath will move to the metals in the test tubes. The metals in the test tubes do not have anything else in them. It's strictly just the metal and I simply put it in there. The reason we use the water is because we know that the water temperature when it's boiling should be 100 degrees Celsius. And we'll check this, verify it, and place it in our results table. But we know that the starting temperature of the metal is whatever the boiling point is of water, which should be 100 degrees Celsius. You're gonna obtain a 600 milliliter beaker and fill with water, about three fourths or a little bit higher. You want enough room at the top that when you're boiling, it doesn't splash over. So I'm a little bit above three quarters of the way and I still had room to put my test tubes in. And that's the important thing. We're gonna get the water to boiling and then we need to get our zinc. So we're going to measure out our zinc and I already pre-measured and tarred out the weighing boat. And I have my zinc and we're simply going to put it inside a test tube. So here I have my zinc sample. I placed it in my test tube. I want to at least go up at least halfway. I can go up a little bit higher, okay? Um, I would make sure that I label my test tubes because I have three of those and I go ahead and get all three set up and get rolling on this lab. So go ahead and measure out all three and get them ready to go in the water bath. Now please note, when you get done with the zinc at the end, you're not gonna discard it in the fume hood. You are actually going to dry it and put it back in the original container. So you don't discard your zinc at the end. You're gonna place it back, dry it into the container. Okay, so now we're gonna place our labeled test tube into our water bath and we're gonna allow it to heat up for about 10 minutes to 15 minutes. I have all three in my water bath. I also have a second hot plate going that has some additional water. So in case I evaporate too much water off here, I can just simply put in warm water or boiling water and I'm not losing too much time. So that's just another technique to help you keep this rolling. So we're gonna use what's called a calorimeter and the calorimeters come in different methods depending on what you have available to you. So the first one up is this one right here. Um, this is a nice calorimeter. It has, it has a spot right here for the thermometer. It has only one hole that's open. And so we would put our thermometer down into there. If we have electronic thermometers, we'd rather put those down in there, in which we do. So I'll put that in there. Okay, and it fits right there. Uh, this right here, this is a stirring rod, and it simply just goes up and down for stirring. It's like churning butter. And when we look on the inside of this, here's my stirring rod and there's an inside cup. And this is the cup that I end up weighing to do my calculations, not the ring, but just the cup. And I weigh the cup's mass because that's where my transfer energy is gonna take place between the zinc and the water that I'm gonna put in there, okay? The inside of the cup is empty because we use air to insulate it. And the reason is, is because I wanna get the energy that's being transferred between the water and the metal and not between the table and the metal. Our second type that we'll be using is a coffee cup and it's a great, it's a great calorimeter as well. We're going to have this slot here in the lid that'd be for the temperature probe or if I want to, I can also use a thermometer with it. Okay, I can stick a thermometer in there and then I have a stirring rod. Okay. 
So there I have my setup. And then to insulate this, I simply am going to either A, place it inside another cup, and that acts like the outside cup here, or if I had a large enough beaker, I'd put it inside the beaker, okay? Technically, it's still insulated because it's, it's being insulated from the table, okay? So either method is available to you on this one. We are limited on these. So step one, we're gonna weigh our cup and record the mass. And that's our inside cup for the calorimeter. I also want you to weigh your stirring rod um, because that is also gonna be involved in the energy transfer. And then we wanna set up your calorimeter. So here I have my calorimeter cup. I've got it set up. And then I'm simply going to take 100 milliliters of tap water and I'm going to pour it into my calorimeter cup. And I'll put the lid on there. And I need to get a starting temperature for the water. So once you have this set up, we're simply going to, um, we're gonna turn to where we have this, where I can do this. I'm gonna grab one of the metals I weighed out. I'm simply gonna take this dump, get the lid on there and just stir. And I'm looking to see what my uppermost temperature is on this reaction. And then I'm gonna repeat two more times. So again, we want the highest temperature that we get exchange between the zinc and the water and we'll record that. Um, we do dump out the water, we dump out the zinc, we dry the zinc, we put the zinc back into the container and we repeat two more times. Extensions, pre-AP, you will need to determine the actual specific heat capacity of your coffee cup and then determine the unknown metals identity using the concept from Tuesday. Chemistry, you'll be given an unknown metal and will determine the identity using the idea of specific heat capacity. For everyone involved, remember both, whether you're pre-AP or chemistry, consider precision and accuracy while conducting your extensions. Good luck, live long and prosper.